Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll focus on getting the best in animal nutrition with expert insights from Purina. And we'll see how Purina Research supports the development of mineral products and cattle feeding programs. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. There's no doubt that one of the most critical factors in your success as a cattleman is your nutrition that you provide for your animals. Sustained nutrition throughout a calf's life can have a tremendous impact on the growth and health of that animal. And as a result, the proper nutrition for calves, cows, stockers and feeders can make all the difference in the profitability of an operation. So today we're going to focus on nutrition with expert insights from our friends at Purina. And joining us today, we have Dr. Ron Scott. He's the director of beef research with Purina Animal Nutrition. Bob Pemberton comes to us from Northern Feed and Bean in Lucerne, Colorado, and deals with producers like me every day. And Dr. Chris Vaccario, he's the manager of beef research for Purina Animal Nutrition. Well, let's begin today, gentlemen, by telling folks just a little bit about who you are and more specifically your responsibilities at Purina. Dr. Scott. Thank you, Kevin. Well, I'm a 21-year veteran of Purina Mills, uh, a native from Indiana. I went to school at Purdue and then Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough uh, when I graduated to join Purina. Mm -hmm. I kind of always wanted to work for Purina, so yeah. it worked out well. And uh, my role today is in uh, developing new products and programs uh, for the cattle industry. And I work closely with Dr. Forcario in that endeavor. Very good. Bob, we worked together for a long time. Tell folks a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm the manager of the feed division for Northern Feed and Bean for the last, last 14 years. Before that, I uh, worked for Purina Mills for 23 years. Very so, good. and now I try and work with producers like yourself Every day. Some of us are more difficult than others, aren't yes, we? Yes, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Dr. Ficario. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, glad to be here. 19-year uh, veteran with uh, Purina. Wow. Uh, all on the research team uh, with Dr. Scott, basically, over those years. Uh, uh, similar to Dr. Scott, uh, got two degrees, uh, basically, in ruminant nutrition. One from University of Tennessee, as well as University mm. of Missouri. Uh, my my role is a little different than Ron's. Uh, I take care of more of the day-to-day -day activities at a research farm, uh, kind of management with our unit, unit workers, making sure our research protocols are conducted where they need to be conducted and mm -hmm. getting builds confidence in our database and how those product, products and programs will perform. Uh, at the same time, I also have the ability to work with our sales team mm -hmm. as well as our dealers like Bob mm -hmm. to get that information into their hands so they can get it into your hands who are our customers out in the country okay. and show value. Yeah, and you are a very research-based company. I'm looking forward to having a discussion about some of that research you're doing. These are exciting times for Purina, and, and, and Dr. Scott, I'd ask you, I mean, tell us some of the things that are going on at Purina right now. Well, we're, we're very, very excited right now because we have a, a very large endeavor uh, where we're expanding our capabilities at the farm. Mm. Um, and it might be good to kind of go over yesterday, today, and tomorrow for some of our, our viewers that maybe don't know a lot about us. Our research facility was established in 1926. Yeah. Uh, the company was established in 1894, but in 1926 is when the research farm was purchased. Uh, the first beef study was in 1926. Yeah. And I looked at it a couple weeks ago. Hmm. Uh, it's really interesting. I bet. Uh, so over those years, uh, we've developed a lot of new innovations in, in the industry. Uh, some of the first ones, Mr. Danforth was very passionate about leadership for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, established a, a program called I Dare You. Mm -hmm. uh, in the I Dare You program, uh, it was a, a conference for developing kids. Yes. So one of the first products we ever developed as a company were show chows. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very important because that way we had some communication with, yeah. with the future leaders of, of tomorrow. You bet. So some other types of firsts that we've had uh, is we had the uh, first complete feed for weaning calves, preconditioning mm. receiving chow. Mm -hmm. That was back in 1968. Uh, today mm -hmm. we have a, an improvement of that called Precon Complete. Mm -hmm. uh, we've developed some uh, free choice products under our IM, IM technology mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
platform, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that stands for Intake Modifying Technology, sure. where we have snack eaters. So we've had, had a lot of innovations like that, but we've had those simply because we've had the capabilities to do research and development. Mm -hmm. So we have a, the uh, Animal Nutrition Center mm -hmm. uh, southwest of, of St. Louis at Grace Summit. Mm -hmm. It's around 1,200 acres. Mm -hmm. And this year, uh, Land of Lakes has confidence in us in that uh, it was decided that we can expand our operation. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting uh, some new capabilities uh, relative to uh, what we can do on the beef research side, mm -hmm. uh, looking at, at some more uh, forage intake, uh, we have a, a, a new building that will have the ability to have a classroom in it also and an observation room for looking at, at what we're doing. Uh, we have a new conference center mm -hmm. that's expanded, will hold, hold more people, has breakout rooms so we can do more training and teaching sure. uh, because part of, part of our industry, we still have young people that need to learn. And with all the innovations that are occurring, even us as PhDs, we have to learn too. Yeah. Uh, so training and teaching is a very big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have more than just cattle out there. So we've got pigs and horses, have dairy cows. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of those uh, uh, species are getting some updates too. We have a new uh, wean to finish uh, for the uh, pigs. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a, a dairy heifer barn. Our, our horse folks are getting a new palatability center and expanded uh, exercise physiology area and we even have some backyard chicken coops and things like that. So it's a very exciting time with a lot of investment uh, for animal agriculture in the U.S. through what we're doing. Sounds like a big commitment and it's a great start and we want to amplify what you're saying just a bit with a closer look at what's happening with the Purina Animal Nutrition Center in Missouri. Let's take a look. This is the home of the checkerboard. 1,200 acres of working farmland where we feed 3,000 animals every day. At Purina, animals are our way of life, our passion, and our business. They're a source of pride. That's why we work hard to make the best animal nutrition possible. That's why we have more than 100 employees, PhDs, and nutritionists that live and breathe the pursuit of animal excellence every day. In fact, for the better part of nine decades, the Purina Animal Nutrition Center has been a key part of our uncompromising commitment to animal excellence. The proof is in the numbers. More than 85 years of continuous innovation, 20,000 studies performed, 1,500 nutrient combinations tested, and over 100 patents granted in the pursuit of better feed. Feeds designed to help improve nutrition, digestion, palatability, and performance. Feeds that deliver results. That's our commitment to the 100 million animals fed Purina feeds every single day, including champion horses, cattle, dairy cows, sheep, pigs, goats, poultry, and more. But our commitment to animal excellence goes beyond the farm. Our feed mills check the quality of the ingredients we receive, and we reject thousands of tons of ingredients that don't measure up. It's a way of doing business that's worth more. It's an investment in your animals. A guarantee of quality and uncompromising commitment to animal excellence. And it all starts here, at the Purina Animal Nutrition Center. That's why we know when it comes to feed, look for the checkerboard. It's the only check you need. Well, let's dig a little deeper, and Dr. Ficario, I'd be interested, what does this new facility mean to your beef research capabilities? Well, Kevin, that's very exciting. Uh, you know, we've always had some capabilities there uh, where we have developed our intake modifying technology, mm -hmm. where we looked at eating behavior of the animals. I don't care if it's grazing cattle or if it's confined feeding animals. Uh, we have a, a pretty good database of, of ingredients, nutrients, texture, physical form, all those things kind of affect eating behavior mm -hmm. and you know, how they accept a pellet, how they accept a meal, a liquid, mm -hmm. supplement, a block. Uh, this new facility is really going to allow us to triple our efforts wow. in, 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 that in that area. Uh, we've got the ability now to not only measure those, those feeding forms that I talked about, but we're also going to be able to come in and measure forage intake. 
because hmm. you think about grazing cattle, how much grass do they consume? Right. You know, we kind of get, get an idea with a percent of body weight based yeah. upon forage quality and things, but we want to really be able to come in with these supplementation programs and uh, the snack eating with the intake modifying technology and how we adjust that eating behavior and show that we can increase forage intake and forage digestibility because, again, that's our most economical source of energy for those brew cows. Mm -hmm. And you want to make the most use of that. Mm -hmm. So this, this new facility is going to allow us to expand that whole arena, uh, not only, uh, like I said, with the intake modifying technology, but also can expand it into confined feeding, uh, growing those steers and heifers after weaning all the way into finishing cattle as well. So it's pretty exciting. Now, as we were talking just before the show, I mean, you've got 50 years of, of intake research. Uh, have you got it figured out yet, or is there still more to learn, I guess I would Good ask? Good question. Uh, uh, we asked that ourselves. Yeah. I think our management team probably asked that more than anybody. <laughs> uh, yes, you guys still working on that stuff? Uh, really boils down to things change over time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we got a good knowledge base. Uh, we've evaluated well over 1,600 ingredients and nutrient combinations that we know affect eating behavior. Uh, but again, at the same time, those combinations are different for a meal supplement. They're different for a pelleted supplement, for a liquid, for a, for a block or a tub. So uh, we're always constantly trying to make sure we get the best value of our supplementation program for our dealers like Bob right. to provide to customers like yourself because uh, the economics always change and we've got to make sure we stay abreast of that all the time. So we're constantly making sure our economics are right, but more importantly, we've got to make sure those products perform. Absolutely. So we've got to control that intake, manage the intake, and make sure we improve that forest digestion really we're trying to do with those brew cows. So tell us just a little bit more. I mean, how do you actually track and monitor and measure, if you will, both intake and performance? In the facility, we have, uh, we call them, Kal they're called Kaling Gates. And uh, they're not unique to our industry by any means. A lot of universities have them, but allows us to feed cattle in a pen setting but get individual animal intake in, in that social environment. Mm -hmm. So a pitcher, a pen, or a dry lot that has uh, 10 to 12 steers in it, mm -hmm. every steer can walk up to that feed bunk and there's one specific gate mm -hmm. in that feed bunk that that steer can go to and that's what he or she eats out of. So there's a little transponder on its neck. It corresponds to a certain frequency in that gate and that steer is trained to eat out of that one location. So that allows us uh, the ability, again, to have that social environment that's very important for cattle behavior, uh, but also allows us, if we have 10 steers or heifers in that pen, all 10 can come up and eat if they want to. Gotcha. So we're not only allowing one animal to come up at a time at one specific feed bunk, there's eight of these Kaling gates or 10 of these Kaling gates for every animal I in see. that pen. Yeah. So now that just tells us individual animal intake. Now what about behavior? Now think about how many times a day does the old steer or heifer come to the feed bunk? Uh, time of day that she does right. it. How much does she eat it or she, he or she eat each meal? To understand that, we have uh, at Purina, we have developed some electronic equipment uh, working with some local scale companies that allow us to monitor hmm. the, the, the amount of feed disappearing, the time of day that it disappears in those bunks. Okay. So it's a Kaling gate combination with the electronic scales and the software, all that kind of goes together. And uh, again, very exciting uh, to be able to do that. That is interesting information. We've only scratched the surface. We'll continue this discussion in a moment, but if you'd like more information about cattle nutrition, Purina, or any of our discussion topics today, you can always visit the website cattle.purinamills.com. And of course, you can also go to cattlemantocattlemen.org for video replays of the show and for more information as well. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, We'll learn more about wind and rain minerals and other Purina feeding programs, how they're developed and tested at the Purina Animal Nutrition Center. Stay with us. We'll have more right after this. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. I am an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA is our voice in Washington. 
I'm an NCBA member. I am an NCBA member because I feel it's important that we have uh, an association such as this in Washington, D.C. to support our cattlemen throughout the country. I am an NCBA member. Join me today. Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we hear from the animal nutrition experts with Purina and learn about how they research and develop feed and nutrition supplements to support the work of cattlemen and women in caring for their animals. Now, as we've talked so far, we, we, we started talking about changing cattle eating behavior, specifically intake modifying technology, uh, and how that fits into the sustained nutrition program. I guess I'd begin with you, Bob. How have your customers benefited from this technology? Well, they benefit from, they, they get to feed the best product available. They get to manage that intake, mm -hmm. and that, that will help manage their forage intake, mm -hmm. which is the, the most important product for those cattle. So it's really managing that forage and, more, and improving that cow or calf or uh, beef animals uh, program. Sure. You know, there's a lot of um, self-fed kind of programs, whether you're talking about blocks or tubs or what have you. And I guess I would just ask, you know, what makes your, what my perception, a self-fed program different than any others? Well, I think that's a, a very fair question. Yeah. The reason why is that there are many products out there. Oh. So why, why are we so unique? Right. Well, the reason why is that our products work, and it's because this is what Chris and I do for a living. And this is 24-7, 365 days a year, we're developing products. Uh, but to take it to the next level, for example, we have the Sustained Nutrition Program, mm -hmm. which are our products we fit into a program. And so 365 days a year, we're offering a supplement free choice for the cows to consume. But they don't eat five pounds every day. Their, their consumption changes over time with the forage availability and forage quality. So there'll be times when they eat you know, less than a half a pound a day, other times they may eat three pounds, depending upon the season of the year. Hmm. Um, and because of that, and because of our, our research and then feedback we get from Bob's customers, from you as a rancher, we know they work. But we started this uh, sustained nutrition around 12 or 13 years ago. Hmm. Uh, started out slowly by offering these products on a year-round basis. We, we knew they would not gobble them up. That's hmm. what you don't want. But where are we going to end up on cost? Uh, because if it's out there all the time, are you going to end up with right. you know 500 pounds of, of supplement consumption, right. which is not affordable? Right. But what we found is that our, our customers have told us cows actually eat less supplement on a yearly basis. Hmm. We think that's because they're not trying to catch up, because they're in a more uniform plane of nutrition, which we call sustained hmm. nutrition. Um, the thing that we forget about for cows is this: cows are feeding two all the time mm -hmm. or three she's not feeding herself only mm -hmm. so if if she's got a calf on the ground she's lactating mm -hmm. she's feeding two herself mm -hmm. and the calf mm -hmm. if she's pregnant mm -hmm. and lactating she's feeding for three after weaning she's still feeding for two sure so we often think about her as just being a cow out there she's a factory yeah. and she needs some special nutrients that we've kind of figured out through these supplementation programs and so what does um, precise or sustained nutrition mean to a rancher? No. Specifically, it means this. When you offer a supplement to a cow, yeah. so for example, you go out and you feed your cows three pounds. Mm -hmm. Is every cow going to eat three pounds? No. No way. Does every cow need three pounds? No way. What we found is that with these IM Tech products, mm -hmm. these cows' consumption will change depending upon what their needs are, but not every cow is going to eat the exact same amount, and that's a good thing. We had a, a VIP one time where we brought in customers uh, and we had heifers and we had the actual consumption of the free choice product out there. Okay. The fattest heifer was eating the least hmm. because she needed the least. Yeah. Hmm. So it's trying to provide precise nutrition mm -hmm. for these cows throughout the time of the year. The end benefit is more calves that are heavier. And that's what it's all about. That's what we're after. We've heard from some producers uh, with firsthand experience on this sustained nutrition program. Now, let's go to Texas in the front range of Colorado 
to hear from a few more. Purina has been a really good partner for a number of years for us. And, and without that, I know that this year would be almost impossible because we've, our cows, we've had on the Purina Superlix program, we keep that out. 365 days a year, those cows have have uh, stayed in really good body condition, even though we've had no moisture. They they've been able to adjust and adapt to forage that's that's poor quality. We're starting to calve now, and uh, these calves are are very vigorous. They're hitting the ground, jumping up, nursing, doing really well, and so we're we're pleased with the amount of heat stress that that the cows went through this summer and the type of forage. Uh, that, that's been really, really good. With their help and being out here with us, uh, guiding us on these kinds of decisions, um, I don't think we'll miss a beat in, in what our expectations are of the cattle as we finish them out. One of the things we do when we uh, wean the calves and then preg check the cows, we take a body score right then and then monitor that through the winter and spring time. And prior to this, we'd have a lot of fluctuation in there, kind of depending on what the pasture condition was or other factors. But now, even though there's, there's still those variable um, environmental factors, um, it, they, they just really level out really well. And in fact, this year, I think we probably gained almost a, a body score through the winter time. We didn't have as near as difficult a winter as some, but um, yeah, so that's something that's going to help us now as we calve because they're in much better condition. Well, one of the things about um, the sustained nutrition with the Accuration products and such is that um, we're feeding that calf in the cow. And um, university research has shown that that prepares that calf not only for when it's born, but beyond that. And we've shown that the last three years we've had all of our, we keep all our, retain all our uh, feeder cattle. And the last three years they've all graded over 85% choice. Um, and they all fit a really narrow window in terms of, of when they go to slaughter. So uh, that's to me a real plus because it, it prepares them quite some time before that. Um, you know, some people like to rough them out and then think they're going to push them at the end. And, and uh, you know, they need that nutrition all the way along there. Breeding performance has greatly improved since we've been on the Accuration product and, and a lot of that has to do with, with the Accuration. We've also been a lot more selective with our cows. Uh, we're, we're, we're culling a lot harder like I said before, uh, but I've been very pleased. The body condition score of the cows has greatly improved and I know that that's leading to, uh, to higher conception rates. We've, uh, we've seen vast improvements where we had uh, uh, 1,600 cows four years ago. We've got 1,100 cows now. We're getting the same number of calves. So if that tells you anything right there, I'm, I'm tickled pink. We've been able to take a lot of pressure off of the pastures, but yet uh, but not lose any calf production. So very pleased. And the weaning weights have, have improved by over 50 pounds. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great turnaround for us. Our cows have done better. Secondly, it's saving us money it won't cost you near as much as if you just feed it part-time. And your cows will always be in a good condition. And you know, it's saving us money on uh, trucking. We don't go out there, but you know, have to fill them up about once a week or every 10 days, according to how much they're eating. And secondly, on labor. We were able to save money and add weight to our calves and get a better breed up. Isn't that enough to tell you what to do? We'll have more with Purina on cattle nutrition coming up. Don't go away. We'll be right back right after this. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Purina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out.
I'm Scott George, president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, inviting you to follow me to Tennessee. We'll be right here in Nashville doing important work, having some fun and fellowship in historic places like the Grand Old Opry. So make your plans to join us in Nashville February 4th through the 7th, 2014. We'll see you there. Welcome back. We're focusing on animal nutrition and the work of Purina in helping producers grow and care for their cattle in the most efficient ways possible. We have a couple more Purina research success stories that we need to get to, so let's shift gears and talk about one of the first things cattlemen consider in developing nutritional programs for their cows, and that's mineral nutrition. Now, Dr. Ficario, I know this can be really, really complicated as you get in and talk about be. trace nutrients and, and, and micronutrients and all the minerals that, that, that we can feed to cows. Boil it down to simplify it for our audience. Really, Kevin, you can boil it down to three main things. Okay. And this is what we tell our customers, this is what we tell our producers when they come to the VIPs at Great Summit, and this is probably what Bob tells his customers. Number one, cattle need mineral. We know that, that mineral self-mentation is important because forages don't always provide the minerals that those cows need throughout the production cycle. Just like protein and energy changes in our forage base, mm. the minerals change. So in order to have a consistent mineral self-mentation program, you need to have that mineral out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So cattle need mineral mm -hmm. supplementation. Number two is you can put the mineral out there, but the cows don't eat it, doesn't do any good. Mm -hmm. So you gotta have to make sure you get the correct intake and get that mineral into the cow. Mm -hmm. Cause she's gotta eat it, digest it, and be absorbed in her system in order for it to have the value. So cattle need mineral, mm -hmm. the cows gotta eat it. And finally, number three, Purina has a large comprehensive line of research tested, field proven minerals that we can really come in and gear the, that the needs for the customers at different parts of the country, different times of the year, different forage bases, uh, regional needs, high selenium, no selenium, things like that. So there is a huge comprehensive line that Bob has available to his customers that are out there. Well, let's go back and talk about number two, because you did say that one of the keys was getting mineral into the cow. You can buy the best mineral, but if she's not eating it, it's not gonna do any good. Elaborate a little bit on that. And really getting the intake is really the hardest part. You now we can design the most balanced mineral uh, using the highest quality ingredients, but like, you, like we said, if they don't eat it, who cares? So uh, we have spent lots of time, Dr. Scott and I have, researching the products and the wind and rain, storm formula minerals there at Gray Summit. And uh, it really, in order for the, those animals to, in, to, to consume the minerals like we need to, you gotta understand the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So you think about most, supplementation programs, phosphorus is usually the one that's high on everybody's mind because we know phosphorus deficiencies uh, affects reproduction, it affects growth and development. And uh, the number one ingredient that we provide phosphorus with is dicalcium phosphate. Mm. And that is very acidic. Cows just don't like to eat it. So now you're trying to get animals to consume a very unpalatable ingredient. Mm -hmm. So we have to come in and we developed and have some proprietary palatants mm. uh, uh, a flavoring type ingredients that we add to the mineral mm -hmm. that way allows us to get a more consistent intake. Uh, another issue is magnesium. Think about grass tetany issues in the spring on those lush quality pastures. Low in magnesium, high in potassium. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have death issues if we have those low magnesium type programs mm -hmm. that are out there. Magnesium oxide is where we get the magnesium from. Mm -hmm. Again, very bitter. Cows don't like to eat it. So now we're trying to take things that just rocks that cows don't like to eat have a bad taste, but you gotta make sure you get that consistent intake. So the research that we do on those types of products is very valuable. Mm -hmm. So again, consistent intake at the target intake that's, that it's uh, formulated for. I might get some of those palatins put on my Brussels spouts. Uh, yeah. Bob, back to you real quickly. What has this meant to your customers? Well, for our customers, it's really about, you know, do, they, do they, the cattle eat the mineral at the rate they're supposed to? Mm -hmm. And is it affordable? And all those things come into play with the Purina storm minerals mm -hmm. and the wind and rain tubs. Mm -hmm. So our, our job is to supply that product to our customers, the ones that work in, in the spring or the fall, and, and, and make it work at a cost-effective manner for them. So it's getting the right product out there at the right time. 
Very good. And speaking of customers, Cattlemen and Cattlemen talk with producers from Arizona to Iowa about how wind and rain minerals help them meet their production and performance objectives. Let's see what they had to say. Mineral is probably one of the most important things that you can do. About 18 months ago, uh, they convinced us to try the, uh, uh, these mineral tubs, the wind and rain tubs. And for the first time in my career, I feel like my cows are actually getting all the mineral and all the trace mineral that they should be getting. Uh, and we only had it for about six months before we calved last year, uh, and we could see an improvement in just the vigor of the baby calves and their ability to fight off stress and illness. Uh, now this year we're just getting started into calving good. Uh, the first thing that happened was our AI conception rates went up. Uh, we do embryo transfer work and those embryos that actually wind up being a live calf, th that percentage has gone up. Our cows are in tremendous condition. Putting this mineral out I think helps bi a cow biologically do what she's supposed to do. Uh, the, I have a, they, they stay healthy, they, they breed back, they have a good conception rates, I have good weaning weights, uh, especially during this drought and wind and rain and storm. I mean, when we do get rain and there's three inches of water sitting in these little feeders I have here, uh, it stays the same color. Uh, when, the water, when the water dries up, it, it keeps its strength. These grasses in this country don't carry everything that a cow needs. They're always deficient in something. So when you feed a mineral program, it's it's gonna it's gonna pick up the the slack that the that the, the that this range doesn't provide. You know, it's every rancher's goal for every cow to have a calf every year and to breed back. That that's our goal because that's the way we make our money, us cow calf people, um, by feeding the mineral, my conception rates. In my weaning rates, uh, you know, I, I, I weaned an 88% calf crop this year. For In this drought condition and for this ranch in this part of Arizona, that's, that's as, as, as good as you can do. Mineral is, is one of the things that we've seen improve the most in probably the last, uh, well, 18 months ago when we made the switch to Perina wind and rain minerals. Um, prior to that, we were feeding a lot of different loose minerals. We tried different products, different companies, and uh, a lot of the times we ended up, uh, we'd go to the pasture not seeing the cows eating mineral. We'd check the feeders. The feeders uh, were hard uh, most of the time from, <clears throat> from rain getting into it, uh, dumped a lot of mineral on the ground. Since we did change to the Prina wind and rain minerals, the tubs, um, we've, we've noticed that the cows like it. We, we can definitely tell that they're eating it. Um, when the tub's empty, we replace it. And uh, obviously we can tell from our conception rates AI that uh, are, they are eating it, it is helping them. And if, as you look at the cattle too, one thing I notice with them is uh, a lot of times it appears a shinier hair coat. They look fuller and look healthier. Now, if you'd like more information about cattle nutrition, Purina, or any of our discussion topics today, you can visit the website cattle.purinamills.com. We'll have more on Purina and their work with cattle producers right after this. Stay with us. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we get insights into the work of Purina on behalf of animal nutrition and the beef cattle industry. 
Dr. Scott, I wanted to get back to you. Tell us what you've learned in terms of getting cattle off to a great start. Well, it's more than just one thing. And it actually all starts off back at the cow herd. Hmm. Because for a calf to perform after weaning, it had to have proper nutrition from mama to begin with, which is a combination of protein, energy, vitamins and minerals, mm -hmm. and the whole sustained nutrition that we talked about. But after weaning is when we have more people issues that come in, mm -hmm. right? So it takes very good planning. Uh, you have to match your labor resources. Uh, so for example, if you have forage and you want to use your forage, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a, a different type of product. You'll need to buy something to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Some people may not have any forage resources. Either they don't have any or they've got a drought. Maybe they need a complete diet. Mm -hmm. uh, and so th those types of thought processes are very important mm -hmm. to go through with your, your feed supplier. But the other thing that is even more crucial is what are you going to do relative to your pens? Mm -hmm. So how big is your pen? So ideally, a, the perfect square footage is around 450 square foot per head as max. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wean your calves in a uh, one section trap, they're not going to see very much of the feed bunk mm -hmm. because they're going to be out walking. Mm -hmm. And the thing to remember, the bigger the pen size is, the more walking cattle do, mm -hmm. and they will walk off their weight gain. Mm -hmm. Well, the weight gain is worth a lot of money today. Absolutely. And so we want them to gain as much weight as we can. But it's so important to get them to eat. So having the bunks in the right place mm -hmm. uh, in the pen is important. So you don't want them in the center of the pen. Mm -hmm. We want the bunk to be perpendicular to the fence line. Because mm -hmm. after weaning, the calves ball, they walk the fence line, mm -hmm. and they'll run into the bunk. If they mm -hmm. run into the bunk, they've got a better chance of eating. Mm -hmm. But you got to have something palatable to eat, and that's where we come in with, sure. with our products. So, you know, we talk a lot about intake modifying technology, and people think, oh, intake limiters. We do other things too. Mm -hmm. We want cattle to eat more, and so we do a lot of research too of knowing what ingredients and the nutrients encourage consumption in calves. And if they eat the right amount of feed, they've got a better chance of fighting off disease on their own. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what it's all about with great starts. Yeah, that's a great, great point. And uh, I understand uh, that you do have a number of different possibilities depending on your management system and your goals. Uh, Dr. Ficaro, maybe tell us a little bit more about what some of the options are. Well, Kevin, I think to introduce these options, let's let Mark Sullivan, one of our customers, really kind of tell us what our options are, oh, sure. and we'll start that discussion after that. Okay. A lot of the cattle that we're going to, uh, that are coming to our operation, uh, have had nothing but mama's milk and green grass and pond water. It's very important to uh, get them hydrated and get some feed in them. We want to get them settled and, and comfortable just as quickly as possible. And good feed is, is uh, probably the number one uh, part of that. We have been Purina customers for quite some time. Um, we, we used uh, the impact starter um, on some cattle. We've used Precon 5. Uh, we've had good success with all of them uh, in, in different capacities. But um, it's a good feed. Uh, it's, uh, it's well put together. It's um, um, consistent. I don't want to mix a lot of feeds. Um, frees up uh, time and manpower and uh, helps us concentrate more on what we think we do better and that is uh, looking after stock calves. Dr. Ficaro, maybe uh, give us just a little bit more insight into some of the options with Great Starts. Well, and the key is one, we don't have one size fits all and there are options out there and I think uh, Mark Sullivan that we just heard from kind of alluded to it that uh, he wants a feeding program that allows him to not worry about the feed so he can take care of his stock calves. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what he said, that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. So we've got those options. Uh, the really the first question, like when Bob goes out and tries to position our starters, does that rancher want to use homegrown forages? Right. And if he does, and that wants to be the majority of the, what that animal is going to consume, we're going to recommend our pre five product. That's a five pound supplement to get those animals a protein, energy, vitamins and minerals, trace mineral fortification with available four organic uh, trace minerals from Zinpro, uh, some diamond B yeast in that to get the rumen fermentation going so they can use that grass. Because mm. that's the key, they want to use the, utilize the grass. Mm -hmm. So that's one option. Let's say, like Ron said earlier, a time of drought, there's no forages out there. You've got to have a complete feed. Mm -hmm. So maybe your objective is get those calves going and get them on feed very rapidly to go to the next stage of production. You may only want to feed a starter seven days, 10 days. Mm 
And that's where our pre-con complete product really comes in. It's a free, it's a complete feed, uh, basically all the nutrition's in what they're getting in, in that pellet. And a very palatable, one of our most palatable feeds that we make to get that intake in very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Then finally, uh, there's another option that maybe you want to save on labor. You want to save, uh, do some uh, free choice feeding. You want to optimize performance, get the best gain, the best efficiency. We want to utilize our intake modifying technology, and that's where our Accuration Starter Complete line comes in. So we've got those different options out there. It just depends on what uh, uh, understanding what the options are, that the, the needs that the customer has. Sure. And it seems there are some good Purina customers that agree with your view. The Satisfied Great Starts Cattle Program believers tell of their personal experience for stocker operations in Tennessee, for Precon 5, and available for tubs. Upon receiving of these cattle, the first 24 to 48 hours, I think, dictates the kind of luck you usually have with the next 30 days. The quicker we can get them started on, on either hay or food and get the room into working, the, the better the vaccination programs work and the less sick cattle we have. Now, these little calves are walking and they're in two to three acre traps and we're weaning them. They're going through a stress period and they walk and they'll take a bite and they'll walk. And it don't take a lot of the pre-con five, I think five, five pounds to five, you know, one percent of their body weight and they've gotten enough in them to, to help them out. We've done a test on the pre-con five and we've used pre-con in the past and the results were, were kind of what I thought they would be. They really wasn't surprising. They were, they were good results. Uh, the cattle started on it quicker, and we had eight pulls, I think, out of 98 head, but none of them went to the sick lot. They all went just to one treatment deal for a four-day treatment and right back out in the pasture, right back the same day, right back on the bunks. And getting these cattle started the quicker, I, I know for a fact that the quicker they get started, the, the better luck you'll have the next 30 days. If you can't get a group of cattle to start, you're going to have some long days in the next six weeks, pretty regular. The Avela 4 tubs we started using pretty re religiously probably a year and a half ago. And I could see it wasn't something you saw quick. It was over a period of time, but, but our selling weights 150 days down the road our selling weights went up and I could see that our sick lots was, was less than our pulls were less. And I think a lot of that is due to the Vela 4. I mean, I know there's other factors that have to figure into those things, but I'm still feeding the Vela 4s and I believe they helped our operation. They get off to a better start. The less sick, the, the, the sooner they go to gaining weight, the, the better your health program will work. <laughs> I hate to say this because it'll happen to me, it'll come back and bite me, but We've actually had weeds grow up in our sick lot the last, last year. And Great Starts also works for feedlot operations in Nebraska. The thing I feel that's probably the most important to get cattle off on the right foot is, is nutrition. And if we can get those cattle to eat and get them healthy, uh, make sure that they have the right uh, nutrients to make things work. And so what we're doing is using some uh, Purina uh, Precon 5 and along with the uh, wind and rain tubs with a veil of four in them, I think the combination of those two fits the bill of what we're trying to do. Uh, get the calves uh, on the right foot, head in the right direction, because with where we're at anymore in this industry, we know that, that uh, uh, pounds pays the bill. And when we have high feed cost, everything has to happen just perfect. Great Starts is also working for wean calves in Nebraska. With this program, it seems like we've had a lot less uh, health issues. Um, they go on to feed quicker, and therefore it turns into a better rate of gain for us in the first 45 days. The pre-con gets them in the feeders, gets them curious, and generally we'll just come now before the, the pre-con is completely gone and put the accuration right on top of it so that it filters down through the pre-con pellets and, and uh, keeps them right in there eating. Healthy calves will gain well. The better health your calves are in, the better they will gain. I think it all starts with less stress, getting them on feed quickly, and getting consistent feed in all the calves. Well, Bob, tell us about how you use the Great Starts program up in our country. Well, we use it, we just try and match the product to the customer. You know, these guys have developed the good products, whether it's complete or with a five pound pre-con five. Uh, you know, we just try and match what it takes to get that gain on that calf, get a healthy calf, calf right now. And at the dollars these calves are, it's healthy, wealthy, and 
and keep them keep yeah. them growing. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for your comments. Now, to find out more about this and other topics related to cattle nutrition and Purina, visit the website cattle.purinamills.com. Don't go away. We'll be back with more right after this. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the Purina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Feeding the world is a big job. The Dr. Kenneth and Caroline McDonald Inc. Foundation has committed more than $2 million to fund research at the University of Nebraska, Oklahoma State University, and Texas A&M University to improve efficiency in the cattle industry and to hold an annual cow-calf symposium. The first symposium was held at the University of Nebraska Lincoln on September 12th and 13th. This cow feeding research supports the entire beef industry. I had sold a magic bolus to a farmer. It was guaranteed to rid his herd of flies. It would pass out with a pucky, and if everyone got lucky, it would kill the eggs the flies laid in the pies. He had bought enough to do a hundred critters. These had better work, he said. They cost enough. Well, I can guarantee you they'll do it. I'll come out and take you through it. You just follow the directions for the stuff. Well, I drove out and found the farmer nearly finished. But the scene I saw sent shivers up my spine. Was the AI tech invited? Had the farmer grown nearsighted? Because the crowd was gathered round the cows behind. In the middle, wearing goggles and a slicker, smeared with green effluent like he'd hit the fan, dressed in pre-composted splendor, poised at ready to rear ender, stood the farmer with the balling gun in hand. Uh, how's it going, boys? <laughs> I asked with trepidation. Well, this bothers some cows more than I'd have thought. This procedure don't impress her. I said, uh, try a tongue depressor. But I knew that all his work had been for naught. So I watched him put the bolus. I can't say it. <laughs> My commission check was going up in smoke. I was going to take a skinning. And then the whole crew started grinning and I realized they'd staged it as a joke. Well, they got me. At the office when I told the boss my story, he got livid, said I'd bollocked up the sale. Now we'll have to go redo them. What the heck did you say to them? Well, since they only had 10 left, I held the tail. This is Baxter Black from back there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you. As we wrap up our program, I'd like each of our panelists from Purina to share some final thoughts. So to set that up, let's get back to Texas and the Bradley 3 Ranch to see how Mary Lou Bradley would summarize this from a producer perspective. 
You know, the deal with Purina is it's, it just helps you on the bottom line. For the feed intake, if you can move your breed up, that's real money. And uh, I mean, I've been pretty clear with Purina from the beginning. It's, it's about bottom line. Can you make a difference in our bottom line, whether it be saving us fuel, labor, or improve body condition on the cows? That's, that's what it's about. And they've been able to achieve that. Longevity makes you money. And a cow that stays in your herd and, and produces a calf every year is some of the best economic factors you can have. And so we've really worked on longevity in this herd early maturity, and feed conversion. You'll be surprised what it does to your bottom line. As we wrap up our show, what are some of the things we should focus on as we conclude our discussion about cattle nutrition? Dr. Ficario? Kevin, we've heard a lot of success stories from our customers today, and that brings value and some, some satisfaction to me, mm -hmm. is that I see the products and programs that we have developed over the years bring value to their operations. You know, they're in it, the business, uh, they're passionate about the business, the industry, the lifestyle, and I take that role very seriously to allow them to have that lifestyle to be passed on to their future generations. Bob? Well, as a Purina dealer, we wanna make sure that the products that we are selling to our customers really work, and mm. that's why we're a Purina dealer, because they do. It'll make our customers money, and uh, that's what we appreciate. Dr. Scott, what would you add? I think Bob mentioned it earlier, uh, it's all about communication and, and teamwork. So knowing what your needs are as a cattleman, matching up with our products is very important. And then with that feedback, we actually use them to help develop new products to know what, what's missing out there. And for those uh, cattlemen who have used our programs, mm -hmm. we sincerely thank you for entrusting your nutritional program to us. And if you have not used our products, we know there's a lot of choices. We just ask you to give us a chance. Thank you all for coming today. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.